We are doing an investment property. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're doing an investment property today up in Porter, Texas, real far north. Today, I'm actually not gonna do one of my normal videos. I'm gonna help create a strategy of how to look at an investment property. Let's go check it out. So the first part of looking at an investment property, what I always recommend doing is looking at the roof. This is gonna be one of your major expenses. If you can't climb up on the roof whenever you're looking at it, at least do a far back scan and walk around. But today I'm gonna to get up on the roof because this is the only way that we found some of these issues. Coming up on the roof, the first thing that we notice is there's no step flashing along the edge here and there's actually no drip edge flashing. This doesn't mean that the roof is bad or needs to be replaced. This is gonna be one of the expenses that you know that you're gonna run into purchasing this property. Also coming around the corner up here, we notice there's actually a hole where the, the tree took out some of the shingles. Again, doesn't mean that you shouldn't buy the property because the roof has damage, just another thing that you're going to expect. Another step when assessing the roof is actually trying to determine the age of the roof. How you're gonna do that is determine the granules, uh, how much granule life is left of the roof. Easy ways to spot that is if you see some shimmering of the shingles, that means you've lost a lot of granules. But this roof actually looks pretty good. Another way you can do it is by walking on it. You can see that I'm not sliding around, I'm not moving. As I brush my hand across it, no granules are falling ac across. And as I pull on the shingles, the shingle is actually pretty stiff still too. So if I had to guess, this roof still has about five or six years left on it before major damage will occur. So right now, this roof just needs some repairs and let's go check out the next part of the strategy. The next part of the strategy is we're gonna try to assess your foundation. The best way to do this is you're going to look at big major cracks. So you're gonna look for separation in windows, you're gonna see separations in trim around the soffit area, you're gonna look at your expansion joints. And you have to remember in Texas, or in the Houston area especially, we have clay and sandy soils, and you're going to get movement in your structure, and a lot of it deals with water. So how are you gonna determine if it's excessive or not? A really good beginner trick when looking at your foundations is actually look at the brick line. If you look down your brick line, and if you see it's straight, normally you're in pretty good hands. But sometimes you can see a slope in the middle or at the end, then you're gonna be like, hey, I've had some movement in the area normally you can determine exactly why and i have the perfect example here as i'm coming down you can see some separation in this expansion joint right behind me and i'm like all right well i have some separation in the expansion joint and you have to ask why well all the gutters are full the grading is slow here sloped here in this area and there's been an excessive amount of water that sits in this area that's caused this wall to move but it doesn't mean the foundation's failed. If you normally fix your grading issue, the, the movement will stop or it could even go back to normal. So, all right, that's a, way, a good way to assess your foundation. Let's go to the next area, which is the mechanical equipment. Following up with the mechanical equipment for the next part of the strategy is you wanna to try to determine the name brand and the age of your equipment. You can easily look up the name brand online and the reputation that follows it. This is a train unit. It's 2007, it's a three ton 13 seer unit. A 2007 unit for a train is actually not too bad. You know it's at the 10 year, so you probably have about five more years on it. Most of mechanical equipment lasts about 15 years. I've seen trains last up to 22 years. So you know this is a good name brand unit. You always wanna to try to assess the water heater and your HVAC system whenever you're purchasing it because this is gonna be your next most expensive item when purchase. One of the next major items when you're trying to assess to buy your investment property or not is gonna be your panel box. You don't have to open it up to determine if it's gonna be in rough shape or not as an investor coming in. You still wanna have it inspected and you still wanna take it apart, but if you're walking up here and you're just trying to do a general rule of thumb, you know, some things that might set off your alarm is a bunch of tape holding the door together, but also just open it up. You can see some sideways breakers in here and you have a Challenger box. Challenger boxes are an older box. You can easily look them up on Google and determine, you're like, hey, am I gonna have issues with this? A lot of people do have problems with Challenger boxes. I typically don't, but my biggest issue is that there's two different types of breakers in here and you know that this box isn't designed for it. And you're, so you know you're probably gonna walk into some electrical repair without even opening up this box right here. 
All right, the next part of the strategy was we're gonna go up into the attic, but you know, to recap on what we just did, we haven't even walked inside. You've already determined that you're gonna need some roof repairs. You have an okay AC, maybe. You haven't turned it on yet, but you know you have a train unit and you're gonna have some electrical problems whenever you're coming in to fix this property or bring it up to par. So just remember, you can knock out most of the stuff just by driving by and walking around the exterior before you go inside to determine if this property fits you or not. But let's knock out the attic area. This is where we're gonna check out the other half of the mechanical equipment and maybe any structural issues that show up. Okay, just doing a general scan in the attic area. All the rafters look in pretty good shape. The purlins don't look like they're bowing too much. They, they're all installed properly. You really want to go straight to your mechanical equipment because this is where I find major, majority of the issues that are going to be expensive for investors. So looking at this furnace and the coils, they both look original. So you know you're buying R22 Freon coils. Again, if anything goes wrong with your HVAC system, you're going to have to repair it. Uh, the whole system, you have to replace it because they don't make R22 parts anymore. Another thing that I noticed when I first walked into the attic is I have PVC plumbing. That's a good sign. I know this property is not that old, but you want to keep an eye out for galvanized water lines. They're starting to go out all across the city in Houston. Okay, so that's pretty much it. I'm going to knock it out, stop this video right here. So make sure that you always take a look at your, your roof, your foundation, your plumbing, your electrical, and all your mechanical equipment. Those are going to be your five most expensive items whenever you're looking at your properties. So that's Chris with A-Action. You have any home inspection video, <laughs> videos, any home inspection questions, please give me a call. And always like and share the videos. Thanks, guys. Bye. Chris beating up on some cats. <laughs> <laughs>